Welcome to the Mr. Skin Podcast, your weekly dose of what's new and what's nude in movies, TV, and Hollywood's sexiest stars. Now get ready for your host, the world's foremost authority on celebrity nudity, Mr. Skin. The legendary Mr. Skin. Dude, Mr. Skin. Mr. Skin. Mr. Skin. Mr. Skin, everybody. Coast to coast from Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York, it's the Mr. Skin Podcast with your hosts, Mr. Skin and Andrea Lowell. We want to hear from you. Call the show and leave us a voicemail at 484-SKIN-POD. Find all things Mr. Skin Podcast online at MrSkinPodcast.com. We have an exciting show for you today. Hey, everyone. I'm Andrea, and I'm joined by Mr. Skin, and I'll let him totally introduce all this because we are doing the top 10 nude scenes from 1979. Hey, Skin. <laughs> Not 1969, 1979. Oh, man. Well, well, I, well, what I'm going to do is um, uh, I've been wanting to do this, and I'm, I'm kind of excited about it, is... I, I want to periodically throughout the year sprinkle in some podcasts where we we pick a year and kind of set you back to what was going on during that year, um, you know, on television and politics and everything else. Yeah. But then, oh. more importantly, I'll count down the top 10 nude scenes from a particular year. And today, I'm going to start with 1979. And Andrea, I know, uh, I think your grandparents were in high school in 1979. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, I'm th- not that young. Yeah, think, think that this is, uh, this is 10... 10 uh, things more hotter than 69, 1979. But, Ooh, um, I like that. But I really you, like that. I got to tell you, what's fun about this for me now, I've, I've known all these nude scenes, but I don't, a lot of this w- was viewed by me in my early days of recording on VCR and watching cable television as a kid in, in high school and all that. But it's so fun to go back and watch these nude scenes to get ready to do this podcast because mm-hmm. it, I'm telling you, I... I I'm blown away by how graphic and wild the 70s was, and in particular this year, 1979. Um, and Andrea, these some of these scenes are going to blow your very young and innocent mind because you just don't um, you just don't see nude scenes like this um, in uh, you know in movies anymore. And it's 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 kind of fun, but also uh, uh, some maybe some girls you haven't heard of and movies you haven't heard of, but you'll become. Uh, big fans. Plus, my number oh, ten, sure. my number mm-hmm. ten was from a PG movie, and the nude what? scene was that. I know it's just times were different in 1979. That's crazy. So, what in your professional opinion? Because it's baffling to me how we keep progressing as a society. You know, you can see porn everywhere. It's this, that, or the other. Yet the nudity and the scenes have toned so much down that we're going back in time to see the more explicit stuff. Yeah. I, I, it's weird to me. It's very weird to me. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, on one hand, there's a ton of uh, great nude scenes. Like, I still think we're in the golden age of nudity. and But the difference, I think, now is the PG-13 movies, the blockbuster movies just don't... Uh, you know, the people that go to movies now are kids, and back then it was adults. And nudity sold tickets and you'd have like in the first movie i'm going to talk about um was a pg-13 movie and the main star was a 10 year old kid yet it had a great okay. mood scene in it so uh yeah it, it's it's really um uh, well yeah it wasn't even pg-13 it was just pg back in 1979 and um now to to kind of flash back like so andrew here's an interesting note the mcdonald's happy meal was introduced okay. in 1979. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think the average U.S. income was $17,500. Wait, what, what, what? The average income, the average dollar you would make uh, as a family was 17500 The average Holy cost, ball. I know, the average cost of a house was 58000 a little over $58,000. Gas was 86 cents a gallon. Jimmy Carter was president. Uh, uh, he, of course, would lose uh, one term in to Ronald Reagan. That's when the Iran hostage crisis started in November. It lasted all the way till January of 1981. The, the 
when Reagan was sworn in. Um, was it the Pirates beat the Orioles in the World Series? The Steelers beat the Dallas Cowboys in the Super Bowl? I know my friend Steve Dahl, uh, who did D- Disco Demolition, a, a major, probably one of the major radio promotions of all time at White Sox Park, happened in the summer of 79. And um, uh, My Sharona by The Knack was the number one song of the year. And uh, I love that song. I know. And then the big TV shows, I do too. I love My Sharona. And I, I love then Cheech and Chong when they sang this t- to the same <laughs> music, My Scrotum, which is one of the funniest uh, yeah, song pairs. Um, that should be our theme song. <laughs> yeah, My Scrotum. And uh, what was it? Uh, Three's Company, That's Incredible, MASH and Dallas were all huge. Dude, love uh, yeah. Three's Company. Yeah. To this day, I love Three's Company. Oh, I do too. I do too. <laughs> so anyway, that's the era. That's the year oh, that we're, we're hearkening back to for my top 10 that's uh, list. So cool. uh, my trip down Mamory Lane here and um, I'm going to start with the the number one box office hit of the year this one best picture and it was the number one box office hit it's from Kramer versus Kramer which was um you might have heard of this. It was about a real yeah, life. I've heard of it? Yeah, it was. A, it was about a real life divorce case in New York where the dad successfully sued to win custody of the kid. And you may not realize it. You know, looking back, it might not seem like a big deal. But back in '79, this was huge for the dad to win custody. And Meryl Streep played the mom, and this was the movie that made her a star. And it was a huge hit, cleaned up at the Oscars, but. Um, it also had this awesome nude scene at the 44 minute mark because uh, Dustin Hoffman, who played the dad, was starting to date and he had Joe Beth Williams over. And she, you might know her. She was the mom in Poltergeist in 1982. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. So she plays this date who comes home with this now single Dustin Hoffman and um, and she gets up out of bed and walks now. You could see the pics from this scene. Oh, this yeah. was a PG movie. This is the greatness of 1979. This, back then, nuts. it wasn't like, a, you know, kids could see nudity and they didn't die. And uh, Jo Beth Williams. <laughs> Go get, figure, man. Yeah, she gets out of bed. And I'm a big fan of when a girl's wearing glasses and is completely nude. Um, yeah, and, it's, it's hot. It's oh, yeah. sexy. So she's in bed with Dustin Hoffman. She gets out of bed. We get full butt. You get breasts in the hallway. And in a scene that is reminds me very much of the greatest TV nude scene of all time, which is Charlotte Ross in NYPD Blue. I'm talking about network television nude scene where um, she's sleeping over at someone's house and gets accidentally discovered by the, the dad's son. Uh, this The boy, the star <laughs> of the thing, is at home and he stumbles on her. So the reason she's covering up there is she just walked mm-hmm. right into this kid in his pajamas and it's um, yeah, he's like in a sleepy kid days and he's, you know, and he says, do you like fried chicken? He's just, you know, just woke up and, actually, yeah. and she's freaking out but I got to tell you, it's a it was, okay. So it's a number one movie. She's super hot. She also did this nude scene in a couple years later, about five years later, in a movie called Teachers, which I still consider it as the greatest running naked down a crowded high school hallway scene of all time. And um, <laughs> cool. yes, so uh, this is believe me, it was a scene that I watched over and over on cable television <laughs> in the eighties. But Joe Beth Williams in the Dude. hallway, discovered by the little boy. My number ten nude scene of 1979 i gotta say focusing on this ass shot um usually when i refer to a coin slot it's where the top of the butt crack you you know it's Mm -hmm. popping out of pants or something Mm -hmm. but her coin slot the area above her crack Mm -hmm. or leading into her crack is so deep and pronounced it's i never noticed that coin slot fan it's a big one yeah i never noticed that it's uh yeah, it's like finger sized, you know. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah it's cool. No, I love it. <laughs> you I didn't go notice in from that. The top. <laughs> I, n- I didn't notice that, but uh, no, good call. So that was uh, number ten in the best nude scenes of nineteen seventy nine. And Very let me nice. get in. So number nine, I'm sure, is a movie you never heard of. It's mm, kind of obscure, no. but to fans of movie nudity, it's a classic. It's it's Dawn Dunlop in the uh, nineteen seventy nine movie Laura, and okay. she was from Texas, and she had this career that lasted from like 1979 to 1985. And I don't know whatever happened or she just fell off the face of the earth. I have no idea hmm. if anyone knows whatever happened to Don Dunlap. Uh, uh, anyway, but she did this legendary movie. Yeah, 484 Laura. Skin Pod. Let us know. <laughs> yeah. 
it, it's it, and you're going to see a theme here. Um, Emmanuel came out in I think 1974, and in the mid to late 70s, there were a lot of movies, this one included, which was essentially a ripoff of Emmanuel, because this is about okay. a wide-eyed, innocent being sexually liberated by an older uh, perv who exposes her to all kinds of, of carnal experiences. And you have to understand this movie, and I know one I'm going to be talking at number seven, they just not ripped off, but were very much influenced by Emmanuel, which was such a huge hit. And um, this... this um, Dawn Dunlap went on to get naked in a couple of like B movie cult classics, Forbidden World, Barbarian Queen. Those are like legendary movies in in my world, Andrea. And um, she's like, you know, one of those where if she ever showed up at a, you know, one of these uh, uh, shows, uh, fans would would love it. But I really truly don't know whatever happened to her. But this okay. movie, Laura, aired on cable television a ton. Now I chose the scene at the twenty one minute mark where she was just dancing naked. But there's a couple other great scenes. But yeah, full nudity, gorgeous young actress, and uh, someone that I don't know whatever happened to her after nine uh, after about nineteen eighty five. You know, this woman is tiny. I'm yeah. talking like smaller than Carrie Russell, tiny. And, you know, there's a great shot of her, you know, front naked. Mm -hmm. She's got a little bit of a uh, mini fupa going on, which is really <laughs> fucking hot. You know what? A chick is super, super lean. No body fat, but her pussy just pops out a little bit in the yeah. front. I love it. Yeah. No. Uh, it's so hot, especially in bathing suits. But to see it in the flesh is like, whoa, especially on a skinny mini because, you know, it's not. That. That's why I like it. <laughs> oh yeah, no, she was hot, but yeah, she's a. Uh, it's one of those that you know, especially for me watching this movie and and all those others. I was a big fan of her, so no, she's that's great. why she made my list. So Dawn Dunlap and Laura, uh, number nine on the best nude scenes of uh, 1979, and uh, uh, like you said, you could see Dawn's done lap fro in this very nicely. So um, anyway, number eight on the top ten nude scenes of 1979. Number eight is Down. Anna Wilkes in a movie called Fire. And I know, Andrea, you're not knowing a lot of these actresses, but let me fill you in on why this made the list. There's a couple of reasons. Um, okay. She kind of has a Sally Field vibe yeah, to me. Yeah. Smaller okay. boobed Sally Field. Very true. Um, okay. So it was a big deal in the 70s when McLean Stevenson left like the one of the most popular shows ever mash uh mm -hmm. and he wanted to break off and do his own thing well he he did this show called hello larry which i think debuted in 79 it might have been 78 but whatever it was right around that time and donna wilkes who's number eight on my list played one of his daughters and, okay and and it, it's interesting because this is a legendary bomb of a sitcom hello larry oh, where he was like that bad huh yeah i believe he was um working in um like it was like i want to say like washington the or portland or somewhere out north you know northwest and he had these two daughters and i know kim richards was one and mm. donna wilkes was the other one so okay so that show comes out and then this movie comes out. It was like one of those things that um, it was, a you know, one of those things. So you see her because everyone wanted to see this Hello Larry because McLean Stevenson was on. And then after a while, you're like, holy crap, this show sucks. But <laughs> everyone was into the, the two daughters, Kim Richards and Donna Wilkes. They're like super hot. Then this movie comes out, Fire. And Fire is the story of this small town girl played by Donna Wilkes who suffers this tragedy as a teenager. It's it's a little rough. Only in the 70s. She was raped. And then her family is killed in a car accident. So oh, she's geez. like, yeah, so it, they really piled it on in the 70s. But um, or, or no, you know what? Um, I yeah. So anyway, that's what the movie's <laughs> about. But okay. um, in she becomes so this Donna Wilkes in the movie becomes a uh, becomes a um, you know a prostitute. So Ooh. here's the scene in general with the guys. But this was really one of the really great nude scenes of the 70s is Donna Wilkes um, with these uh, with another girl in bed and this old dude, you know, doing the prostitute thing. But again, only in the 70s would they have like 
teenage, you know, 18 or 19 year old prostitutes, uh, completely naked in a movie. And then the same girl ends up being on the hotly anticipated McLean Stevenson television show. So it's Donna Wilkes in fire, 1978, number eight on my list of the best nude scenes of 1979. Right on. You just taught me a whole bunch of stuff I had no yeah, idea about. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. About. It's like, so I, I love like, that because the th- listeners, too, you know, they some don't know either. No, you got to check this out. Yeah, Fire. And very cool. it's actually very difficult to even find good copies of this movie anymore, but it did air on cable television a lot in the 80s, uh, as did the next uh, movie. Um, okay. This, this aired a ton. And, um, it was uh, it's it's Glor- Glory Annan in Felicity uh, from 1979. Whoa. Yeah, and by the Whoa. way, F- Felicity has an iconic box cover. It's Glory Annan eating a chocolate. Uh, box like, cover. Yeah, uh, the, box the movie. Und- I'm looking at a whole yeah, bunch uncovered. of box right here. Yeah, the uh, iconic movie poster slash box cover, uh, box uncovered in this case is her yes, eating babe. this little chocolate bar. But it's an Australian film, which is another version, kind of a takeoff on Emmanuel also. And um, she's actually Glorianne and actually reads uh, is reading the novel Emmanuel in the movie. So there's like no, uh, no ha, ha, question, a nod to yeah, it, yeah, no question. But uh, Glorianne got completely naked in this. I chose the scene at the two minute mark, but there was a ton of others uh, where she's in the nice. tub. And she was in a series of British B movies, including um, Cruel Passion in 1977, where she was a prostitute and Alien Prey in 1978, where she's a lesbian, even Spaced Out from 1979 was another one. But um, she was a Canadian actress who moved to the UK to... Um, pursue acting and then ends up in this iconic australian film and it it is one of those movies where um it just if you were a fan of again a fan of uh you know these kind of erotic uh emmanuel like uh, movies Uh this is one of the classics felicity from 1979 a cable classic and uh if you see the box cover you'll know what i mean it's it's really truly iconic and what great boobs Glory yeah. Annan has. I yeah. mean, they're not big by any means, but they're round, they're perky, they're full. Glory, and you can glory. tell when she puts her... Yeah, they are yeah. glorious boobs. I mean, she's got it all going on. And a, a great ass, too. Yes, I everything. Mean, and she and she kind of has that Marianne look to her. So if you're into that wholesome look, this would be a scene to check out on MrSkin.com for sure. Yeah, and they of course made her try to be seem younger, but I think she was in her mid twenties when she did it. But really cute uh, girl. She she did uh, pass away actually last year, which was a bummer. I think she was Aww. young, like only sixty four years old. But yeah, Glory Annan uh, from Felicity, a cable classic, number seven on my list of the best nude scenes of nineteen seventy nine. Now, cool. Number six, you know her well. Uh, You've heard a lot about her. It's uh, Mm -hmm. Dorothy Stratton in a movie called Autumn Born. Anyone uh, who follows uh, MrSkin.com knows all about Dorothy Stratton, one of Hollywood's all-time great uh, tragic blondes after becoming Playboy's 1980 Playmate of the Year you know, she was set up to really, you know, do well in movies and she had affairs. I know she had an affair with Hugh Hefner, but then also movie director Peter Bogdanovich, who was just in love with her. And it, um, while all this was going on, she was married to that Paul Snyder and Andrea, someone who works for Playboy, you know, the story very well. Mm-hmm. Um, he was mm-hmm. like a, a two bit hustler and he discovered her selling ice cream in Canada. And he, when she was a teenager and he managed her career and, um, she had a really horrible relationship with the guy and um we all know what happened to her uh they did the movie star 80 with mario hemingway about her and he he was pretty much you know acted more like a pimp than a you know than anything else and it's really a tragic a story partner and a husband yeah Ugh, Total yeah dick. he was horrible piece of and, shit yeah yeah and we all know how it ended you know yeah. if you saw the movie star 80 with mario hemingway but before all that happened she did this movie in 1979 called autumn born and andrew <laughs> you could really see like what a spectacularly oh, beautiful woman um dorothy stratton was dorothy oh, yeah. stratton was an angel on 
earth, you yeah. know, from the hair on her head to her perfectly manicured toes, but a natural beauty from, by every yes. means possible. You know, yes. she didn't need one bit of enhancement uh, because she w- had these, you know, this beautiful face, just this angelic, beautiful face wonderful skin tone look i mean in this movie you can see just straight up amazing tan lines which you and i go gaga over but the boobs man they're so big they're so voluptuous they have that swing factor without being too too droopy you know what i mean the the perfect little ass it's not big but it's perfect and the beautiful sculpted long legs without being like overly muscular she was just um a genetic phenom i mean uh, no, a, I agree. True, a, a gift to this world genetically. I mean, just phenomenal. Yeah, if you haven't seen Dorothy Stratton, um, look her up or come to MrSkin.com because she really was uh, an incredible beauty. And the sad thing was, like, even this so movie, beautiful. like, in this movie, Autumn Born, mm-hmm. is it, it's like, even this is kind of a downer because she stars as this teenager whose uncle wants her to, like, sign over her inheritance to him so he hires goons to kidnap her and take her to a school of discipline yeah i mean crazy uh, only in the 70s right but um still a movie that um i do not believe has ever been released in um you know uh, anything other than vhs so we have vhs copy of this at our website but i'd love to get a a better print for our site but still she looks fantastic and that was my uh yeah my sixth best nude scene of the year you know I want to say there's so many great shots and scenes from this movie, from Autumn Born, Mm -hmm. but I think you have to agree with me. The absolute most spectacular is the one where she's bent over some sort of silver chaise lounge and you get the best butt shot on earth, but you not only get an under boob, you get a side boob. It's like this huge swinging titty. It just makes you just want to like go behind her and grab it. I mean, oh, she is, was a dream. And just to be able to look at her and celebrate her and everything that she was, um, it, it makes me very happy because this is, you know, she celebrated nudity. So oh, yeah. I love the fact that we're, you know, paying her homage. So I love it. Dorothy Stratton, one of the most beautiful women to ever walk the planet. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I have a quest to find a, a very good print of Autumn Born uh, for the okay. website. That'd be like our, our Harry Grail <laughs> if I could find that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I will keep I you posted. It. But uh, right now we only have a VHS copy at our website, but still uh, a, a great moment and something that did air on cable TV a lot in the 70s. And I, I checked it out. So anyway, now we're down to the number five uh, for the best nude scenes of 1979. And quite frankly, I tried to n- narrow it down to just one actress, but I'm just going to go with um uh i'm just gonna go with uh the whole movie itself it's, okay. it's the legendary <laughs> that good, huh? well, it's the legendary caligula <clears throat> okay. from 1979 and it, it, listen i wanted to use helen mirren a scene or Teresa and savoy or even this morello d'angelo which was a very rough scene where she was de-virginized um by uh by uh, uh malcolm mcdowell but or Caligula, but what, uh, I mean, this is a skin classic. It's, it's the biggest, weirdest, most insane, hardcore sex film ever made without question. It was financed oh. and produced by uh penthouse magazine and co-directed by publisher, Bob Guccione. And the other director was hmm. Tinto Brass, who's one of the all time masters of European soft core. So this, wow. thing, yeah, this thing was going to be awesome. And then think about this it. This is Mel- legendary. <laughs> yeah, it is. It had Malcolm McDowell yeah. as the mad Roman emperor Caligula. Helen Mirren played the queen. Teresa and Savoy played Caligula's sister, uh, who they have an incestuous relationship. Um, And don't forget, they even had Peter O'Toole and John Gilgood, who are like, you know, like Academy Award winning. I mean, this was like... This This is no joke. No, and this was basically a porn movie, which is incredible. It was was originally... it's no. like a porn, but it's no, but it's a it is full a porn. feet. Wait, it is a porn. Well, I, no, I it's wanna, not a porn. There was there was real se- there was real stars. there was real sex in it. Um, wait, what? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Helen Mirren was in this movie, and there was wait, real sex. What? Not she. Did- and, uh, uh, Y- yes, uh, I'm. I'm uh, spe- uh, speechless. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> it's like only in, ni- only in 1979. Like no one would, no Wait, serious what? actor actress would do this in today's world. But, Was this uh, in the theaters? 
Yes. And listen, <laughs> to give you an idea, it was originally intended as a serious movie. Uh, and, well, and the yeah. script was going to be by Gore Vidal, who, who, you know, is like bigger than big, a, a novelist, yes. political theorist, all that. And once they started filming, everything kind of went off the rails. But this really? movie has rape, torture, incest, perversion of the, you know, only that you would see in, in ancient Rome with Caligula. And it, Andrea, it has full penetration. Pornographic. Se- yes, I'm telling you. It, it, yeah, yeah. I cannot believe this. You are blowing my mind. Okay, so we have all this going on. Full penetration. We'll continue. I- I'm just gonna shut up and listen. Well, yeah. And it was it was about the life of Caligula and uh, who's it, Caligula? Well, he was a uh, yeah, an em- uh, uh, one of the most infamous Roman emperors. And listen, okay. it. it um, <laughs> like, I feel so ignorant right yeah, now. Yeah, th- this thing made a fortune on VS. VHS it was uh, when this no wonder came, my parents never let me see it yeah 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 right they you would not that would not be good but yeah this movie I think it was um uh, obviously it was rated X and it well I think what they did is they put it out unrated and it opened in um uh, special screening rooms in select cities to build buzz and, and this worked oh and, and once the movie God. went wide it was a huge hit in theaters everywhere and again Andrea movie X-rated movies or movies like this were huge in theaters in the 70s we're, we're in a different time now but people didn't have internet and they didn't have video they would have to go to the theater to see this uh, <sighs> kind of thing this is right before VHS even started when this movie came out so in 79 and 80 it killed it and then within a year or two it, a lot of people had vhs and betamax and you could rent you know, it and then it became a monster hit on rental that's the greatest point you could have made because i forget that i forget in this world of instant access um you know and i'm i'm that mini generation where i had both non-instant access and then the boom of the internet um but i wasn't old enough to understand yeah. You know the the need and the consumption of adult at that time. Yeah. So I don't. I forget that in order to see it. Let me just paint a picture of what I'm seeing. And I'm just seeing snippets here. I'm seeing pussy eating. I'm seeing yep. virginizing. I'm seeing ass eating. I'm seeing so much going on. It's like I would never imagine you could see this in a theater. Well, but, but it was a completely but also different with time. Like legendary actors and actresses too. These Wait, are like yes, because this are... isn't a porn in a movie theater. No. This is a straight up movie with. Big, big actors. And of course, there's, uh, I'm sure, some porn actors in here as well. Or are these all real, real true actors eating box and, and Andrea, penetrating? There was, there was fisting in this. There was bestiality. Wait, what? Yes, I'm telling no, you. No, there's bestiality. I know. You'll, you'll, they don't we'll, show you'll, that, we'll do have they? To do a, we'll have to do a private screening. But yeah, Holy it just. Holy fuck, man. And okay, you know what I else they this charge? This is going on the list of shit I got to watch. Yeah, you and the hubby got to watch this. They, uh, you can I don't do like a toga. Turn you can, off, you can do a toga party and watch this. They, um, <laughs> <laughs> they um and I guess like from what I read once where oh my God. they charged Fucking when shit. this was hot in the theaters because of all the graphic stuff they actually charged more than like if a, if a normal movie ticket was five bucks they charged ten or fifteen bucks Got it. yeah you know what I'm saying so they made a ton of money on this and um yeah it's pretty it's pretty crazy so I didn't I could have chose any of those scenes from Caligula <laughs> but I uh, yes, I just am saying Caligula in general come in at number five so um, I do want to say of all these scenes though Teresa and Savoy top notch titties yeah, I mean, just, yeah. just, what, just had to mention that top yeah. notch titties so um, now this is again this is Mr. Skins uh, top 10 favorite nude scenes from 1979 and you'll understand why I love number 4 so much and I cannot tell you how many times I rewound and froze and watched this on VHS when it finally came out but it's Pamela Sue Martin in the lady in red at the 25 minute mark the great strip search uh, see now you wouldn't know this but Pamela no. Sue Martin the year the two years before this movie came out was on Sunday nights I used to watch as a as a kid um, yeah. when I was in like junior high and like freshman in a big show was Hardy Boy Nancy Drew Mysteries the, I know it sounds <laughs> corny but this was a popular Sunday night show and mm-hmm. she played Nancy Drew Pamela Sue Martin so imagine mm, okay 
the next year that airs for two years the next year the lady in red comes out and she's naked in it and and in the scene she's in prison she's in prison and um there's drastic a bunch, character change there's a t- there's a t- it's not just uh pamela sue martin but a bunch of women in prison ladies um standing there naked and they have like this this mean um woman who puts on the rubber gloves and wants to examine all the women so oh. it's a, but you gotta understand like nancy drew and then the next Get year, strip yeah, so in like prison. the power of like, oh my God, Nancy Drew is naked. That's a big deal. Yeah. Yes. And, um, yeah. So, and don't forget, she was also Fallon on Dynasty from 1981 to 1984. She was a big late night TV soap opera star from Dynasty. And wow. yeah, so she, she was really trying to change her Nancy Drew image with Lady in Red and then Dynasty and all that other stuff. So yeah, it, and, and Lady in Red is, uh, she plays, um, the woman who turned depression era gangster John Dillinger into the cops. That's what this is about. And Robert Conrad co-stars is, mm. um, Dillinger. I remember Kitten and Tavi Dodd had a, uh, a nude scene in this and um yeah it's pretty cool and that all happened here in chicago uh andrea so anyway pamela wow. sue martin in the lady in red uh nancy drew um in the great strip search scene in the woman's prison is my fourth best uh nude scene of 1979 now, I'm, I'm blown away yeah. i can't imagine what the top three are going to be i i'm just I, mind blown you've left me speechless mind blown fascinated all right keep keep going well <laughs> As a 17-year-old, and I probably even saw this when I was um, 16, um, because I didn't turn 17 to the very, very end of the year, one of my A-cup all-star favorites is Season mm-hmm. Hubley. And I was a... So I would have been... Let's see. So, I, oh, no. I would have been... I would have been a... For, well, I'm not sure what year, what part of the year Hardcore came out, but I was either a freshman or a sophomore in high school when this movie came oh, out. Wow, okay. And I vividly remember being at the Mercury Theater on uh, North Avenue in Melrose Park, Illinois, and uh, seeing this movie and this scene with, and this is why I have it at number three, it's Season Hubley in the movie Hardcore, and Hardcore is completely crazy, over-the-top cult classic where George C. Scott um plays a dad whose daughter runs away and then she gets into porn so the whole movie is him trying to track her down you know they didn't have the internet they didn't have you know Mm -hmm. uh, america's most wanted or anything like that so he has is this crazy dad trying to find his daughter uh who i supposedly gets kidnapped and brainwashed and gets into porn so this is the movie what it's about so in the course of trying to find his daughter he goes to one of those like sex shows because he heard that maybe these people might know where his daughter is so right he 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 goes and gets season hubbly to do it now look at her okay so first of all she walks in and she has you know smaller boobs big hairy muff and she walks in and he's got to talk to her through the glass and this blew my mind now they they don't show the gyno shot but she puts her (sighs) she puts her feet up on the glass it's like a gyno shot to talk to yeah. him. It is such a hot scene. Plus, she's completely nude and has the big bush, and she's gorgeous. And this scene at the hour and five minute mark of hardcore was a scene that I'll always remember. And uh, uh, George C. Scott, uh, they should call him George C.'s slot here, because <laughs> uh, yeah, because yes. um, it Slots is a open, it is baby. a great, Wide great open. it is a great great scene. Season Hubley and hardcore, my third favorite nude scene of nineteen seventy nine. And the thing is, like you said, she really is gorgeous. It's not yeah. like some girls that are just, you know, phenomenal boobs or bud or, oh, they're showing bush and this and that. She's beautiful. Yeah, like, she stunning. was right. She was in. I know like maybe an audience today doesn't know too much about her, but she was in Escape from New York, a really cool movie from 1981. She was also in. um she played a Hollywood streetwalker in, in a in this is a grindhouse classic called Vice Squad. And um, a lot of. Uh, She played practically the same type character in that. And, you know, again, she was um, not a huge, huge, huge star. She was on Family, which was an ABC series Mm -hmm. uh, with Meredith Baxter. So she was pretty well known in the 70s. So uh, and a highly acclaimed actress for sure. But I'll tell you, that scene in um, Hardcore blew my mind. And I, I still love it to this day. That's number three on my best nude scenes of 1979. 
All right, I'm ready for number two. Well, number two is just a skin classic. It's another one where I couldn't pin down just one girl. And as you look at the picture, Andrea, you'll understand why. I can why. see why. <laughs> it's the girls of hots and this legendary camera, uh, the best without question, topless uh, touch football scene in the history of the world is the scene <laughs> at the hour and 33 minute mark where the girls are all in a huddle and it the camera's like the guy's like the cameraman's like laying on the grass looking up at all these beautiful women and by the way andrea a ton of the girls in hots that were nude were play mm -hmm. playmates from that era i remember sandy johnson is it one of those girls uh, mm -hmm. She was, I think, 1974. Susan Kiger from 1977 and Pamela Bryan, uh, April 1978, Playmate, Love are it. among the many uh, naked girls. E even Lindsay Bloom was a Miss USA in 1972. Okay. And my favorite. So the caliber is like crazy high. Yeah. My favorite is Angela Ames, who plays Boom Boom. Um, she was the one who is, in, by the way, Andrea, she's naked in a bathtub with a real life seal in this movie. It's a what? it's a funny yeah it's a funny um, movie. In fact, Danny Bonaduce is the male lead in this, which is <laughs> kind of crazy. And uh, yeah, so it has an incredible nude skydiving scene. This great. Um, football scene and yeah by this the way, naked huddle is something yeah, else man yeah and this movie aired on cable constantly well into the 1990s and it's always you know it's just like a funny silly teen sex comedy about the college sorority of the uh, title and all the shenanigans they get into so uh, the girls of hots the incredible uh, topless huddle scene where they're all huddled like a football huddle with yeah, their arms around man. each other all natural boobs and the camera's looking <laughs> up from the ground up looking at Dude, the huddle. Number that's two. That's all natural? Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, 70, 79, I guess. When did fake boobs become popular? Or I don't know. It was right around this time where actresses okay. started to actually have fake boobs, Crazy. which always bums me out. But yeah. All right. Uh, now, you told me number one was going to be a PG rated film. Is, is that right? Was this a PG rated film? That's a good question. It probably was, but I want to say no. I want to say it was rated R, but we'll have our, right. my, my crack G staff give it to me. could tell me. But I, I believe uh, t um, number one on my list was not PG because it had a lot of nudity, but it also but it was has, 1979. So yeah, yeah, it had naked porn stars in an orgy scene. So no, it was not PG, but hey, it was <laughs> okay. 1979. Anything could happen. But no, I, I believe it was rated R. My number one nude scene of 1979 is the iconic nudity from Bo Derek in the movie 10. At, at wow. Now, there's a couple scenes. There's her in bed. There's her um, obviously jogging down the beach. That's the iconic, iconic scene, but she wasn't nude in that. There was a scene when Dudley Moore comes to the door and she answers it in the towel and shows him her butt and, and mm -hmm. then he sees her boobs in the mirror in the bathroom the whole the whole bit of it is my number one uh nude scene of of 1979 and uh, okay so first of all the poster image in the actual movie scene of Bo, Der Bo Derek with that you know the you remember the beaded braids the, oh and the yellow yeah one I piece. mean everyone yeah. knows, even to this day if you were born today you would know this scene yeah that scene made yeah. her no matter what she did after that movie which quite frankly um wasn't much as far as quality um oh, yeah. she's that's, just that's the word the, on the street <laughs> she's an all-time supreme movie sex goddess because of that and the other cool thing is like you don't this is something you probably can't imagine but like as a guy for me when i was in eighth grade freshman year sophomore year like we didn't say like you know we'd say oh that girl's a fox or we'd say that nobody said she's a 10 after this hmm. movie that's the rating system of girls like to this day like would you think yeah she's about a six you know oh she's a nine yeah you know? <laughs> not it was because of this movie that guys say if a girl is a you know what we rank them by numbers so yeah and and it's she's like i said she's still an icon it's all about this and by the way 10 as you can imagine was a monster hit i know um, mm -hmm. it wasn't the best like it wasn't up there with um uh, um, Kramer versus Kramer, but it was like right up there with Alien and The Jerk as one of the you know top grossing movies of the year, and it played in theaters very long, very long time. I think it was over a year, which if you can imagine a movie playing over a year in this day and age, it doesn't you know 
doesn't make sense, but it was a sophisticated uh, sex comedy for adults, which we okay. don't see much anymore. And um, yeah, it's just it's just one of those movies that. Um, um, it's just one of those movies that still is fun to watch today. It starred Dudley Moore. He was like a middle-aged Hollywood composer who's he's in this nice, mature relationship with actually with Julie Andrews, who, who by the way, looked really hot in this and has huge natural boobs too. And when they're in bed and she's in her um, when she's in her nightgown. I really wanted to see those boobs, but she didn't show me. This. You, had go, you had to go see SOB two years later to finally see those. But <clears throat> he sees Bo Derek leaving a church after her wedding and he ditches everything to chase her on her honeymoon in Mexico. And he actually hooks up with her, which is cool. And then he realizes that, you know, hey, it's not as great as he thought and whatever. But yeah, 10 was directed by Blake Edwards. Um, he's the guy that made the Pink Panther movies and a number of other Hollywood classics and uh, again can't say enough about 10 now she would go on to do Tarzan the Ape Man um, Bolero Ghost Can't Do It where she was naked but which probably had much better nudity than 10 okay. but 10 is still um, because of everything I mentioned it happened first <laughs> yeah it happened first it was the first yeah. time we we really got to know Bo Derek and she became a huge star that's why Andrea I chose it as my number one nude scene of 1979 i'm blown away skin and i feel like i almost say that every time we do a top 10 list but you really have blown my mind and you've given me such a great glimpse into 1979 you know starting with kind of the history in the background but just like your website you gave me just the stuff i need to know you know i know just where i need to pause the best nudity the best butts uh boobs uh you know celebrity star power You've enlightened me to things like Caligula. I'm like, holy shit. Um, this was amazing. So I think for anyone who would like a trip down memory lane and relive this glorious year, this is the list to refer to. Or if you're like me and you weren't even alive yet or you were too <laughs> young to know about 1979, what a way to get a bit of, a bit of history, especially uh, sexually speaking. This was phenomenal scan bravo buddy yeah and a lot it was a lot of fun for me to put together and go back and watch these scenes again and i had to watch actually i was i watched about 30 scenes to narrow it down to 10 because i didn't immediately have my top 10 figured out but that was fun too and it's it was just a different time but a lot of fun so anyway thanks andrea and uh we'll we'll try to knock out um every year as part of the fun uh of the mr skin podcast we'll do this for um every year that there was nudity so do so amazing. I can't I have a lot wait. of work right, we'll ahead talk- of me. <laughs> we did. It'll be fun work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll talk next week. You got it. Take care. This concludes another skin to leading episode of the Mr. Skin Podcast. Subscribe to the Mr. Skin Podcast in iTunes and never miss a show. Thanks for listening.